Yes, it's another electric car review, but look, it's not a crossover. No, it's the Vauxhall Astra, and not only is it not a crossover, but you can have it as either a hatchback or, unusually for an EV, as an estate. So, welcome to the Car Gurus UK YouTube channel, and let's get cracking. The arrival of the Astra Electric completes the Astra lineup, and it means that there are now three distinct powertrains available for this car. So there's internal combustion, there's plug-in hybrid, and then there's this full electric one. Now externally, there's actually not really much in the way that you tell the difference between them, and that's a very deliberate move on Vauxhall's part, because there are, of course, two distinct schools of thought when it comes to building EVs. So the first one is to do what Volkswagen has done, for example, and create a completely different platform and range of cars that are electric. The other one is to take Vauxhall's approach and make electric versions of your familiar model range. There are pros and cons to each approach. Clearly, by taking Vauxhall's approach, you don't risk alienating buyers who might not want to drive a car that is fundamentally different to what they are familiar with. The downside of not using a bespoke EV platform is that you don't get to play around with packaging in the same way, and that certainly plays out in the Astra Electric, so specifically in terms of boot space. So in the hatchback, you get less boot space in the electric than you do in the internal combustion Astra. It's 352 litres, which is on the small side for a family hatchback. It's less space than you get in an ID3 or a Cupra Born, less space than you get in an MG4. It's one good reason why you might go for the estate instead. Uh, that gets a 516 litre boot. Again, it's not as big as you get in the, um, the petrol Astra Sports Tour estate, but I can speak from experience. I've taken one of those cars um, the plug-in hybrid, which has the same boot space, 516 litres. We did a family camping trip, four people in all our gear, and it did cope, just about. Another bonus of the estate is that it has a lower loading height and a slightly wider load bay. Now, as you're watching this video, you might well be aware that Vauxhall also makes an electric version of the Corsa. In fact, by 2024, it's going to have an electric version of every single model in its range. But focusing on the Corsa just for a second, one of the biggest drawbacks of that car is that the rear seats are not the roomiest, they're a bit cramped. Um, that would therefore make the Astra Electric a logical upgrade, and it does have more room, as you'd expect. It's a bit wider, there's a bit more legroom, a bit more headroom. However, it's still not that great for rear space. Um, a Volkswagen ID3 is a fair bit roomier. If you've driven other versions of the Astra, you will recognise the cabin. Vauxhall, again, has been very careful not to make this feel any different or any wackier than a normal Astra. And generally, I think it's done a good job. It's a, it's a nice cabin. Vauxhall calls its approach um, the detox layout. The idea being that you get rid of as many of the sort of fussy details and buttons as possible whilst maintaining enough buttons for the important functions for the heater controls and the heated seats. And I think it's got the balance just about right there. I think Vauxhall done a really good job. There's also tons of in-car storage, massive door bins, a big tray at the front here. There's another tray under the infotainment system, big um, cubby under the armrest, huge glove box. So again, thumbs up there. The only thing I would say is that it's quite dark and a bit drab in here. Um, compared with a lot of EVs that feel light and airy and modern, well, this yeah, just doesn't. The infotainment system takes a frustratingly long time to boot up when you first start the car, and it can be laggy to respond to inputs, but it has a couple of neat features, including some inbuilt games like Hangman, and all models come with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So let's talk about driving the Astra, and we're gonna start with the range. So official range for the Astra Electric is 258 miles, 256 miles for the Sports Tourer state version. And for that, you can thank its 54 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery and the inclusion as standard of a heat pump to boost efficiency. In the WLTP official test cycle, this car does 4.2 miles per kilowatt hour. That's a very respectable figure. Um, and basically what all this means is that the Astra has enough in terms of range to suit a lot of people who are thinking about going to an electric car. The battery feeds an electric motor that produces 156 horsepower and 270 newton meters of torque. Performance is, well, it's okay. Um, so 0 to 62 miles per hour takes 9.2 seconds. So this isn't one of those EVs that wows you with its response and its acceleration. Um, it would be 
unfair to call it sluggish, but it's definitely, yeah, it's not quick. Um, note too that the power output changes depending on which driving mode you're in. So if you go in eco mode, it really restricts the power. Um, fine for around town, but pretty frustrating actually on the open road. Um, going to normal, you get a bit more. You don't get the full power by default unless you're in sport mode um, when it does feel more responsive but still not quick. I think ultimately a lot of Astra electric owners might find themselves defaulting to sport mode for most of the time. Regardless of driving mode, you can still put your foot all the way to the floor to quickly access maximum power. Now, in fairness, Vauxhall does not position the Astra Electric as a performance model. In fact, it almost goes down the opposite path and talks a lot about refinement. And I think that's fair, actually, because while there is a bit of tyre noise, otherwise this is a really quiet car to get around in. And it rides well, too. So 18-inch wheels are standard, and the ride is good. It absorbs the bumps nicely. Um, and what all this means is that, well, the Astra, as long as you're not in a hurry, it's just a really quite a pleasant car to tool around in. When the battery does run low, the Astra can be rapid charged at up to 100 kilowatts, which will boost the range from 20 to 80% in about 26 minutes. Or you can plug into a seven kilowatt home wall box to get a full charge in around eight hours. So as far as EVs go, the Astra Electric does have a fair bit going for it. Notably, the, uh, the range is pretty good and also the smooth driving experience that we mentioned. It's just an easy car to get around in. Um, however, there are, I think, two major considerations with this. And the first one is, as we mentioned about the practicality, it's just not as roomy inside as competitors such as the VW ID3 or the MG4. The second is the price. The Astra Electric range starts at £37,795 for the hatch or £40,000 for the estate. And this top spec ultimate trim is £43,000. While that's competitive with rivals such as the Peugeot E308, which of course shares a lot of parts with the Astra Electric being part of Stellantis, um, it's also dangerously close to what you pay for a Tesla Model 3, and it's more than you can buy a VW ID3 or a Cupra Born for, and it's a lot more than a Chinese-built electric car such as an MG4. Now, Vauxhall's hope is that it can structure its PCP deals in a way that can show that show consumers that what you pay monthly for an EV, once you take into account the lower running costs, actually is pretty much at parity with what you pay for an internal combustion engine Astra. Now that's all well and good, but here's the thing, the Astra as a range is a car that at Cargroups we rate three out of five stars in our review. Um, and the advice really is, it's a good car, it's solid, and if you can find a really good deal on one, then go for it. However, it's not the best in class. And I think the tricky thing for the Astra Electric is gonna be, certainly in the early days, those really tempting deals might not materialize straight away, at least compared with what you pay for rivals. And that leaves it in a tricky spot because, I don't know, with prices the way that they are and all the other things we've talked about around packaging and everything else, I just think some of its competitors are doing a better job. What's your take on the Astra Electric? Could it be the car to make you switch to EVs? Let us know in the comments and remember to subscribe to the Cargurus UK YouTube channel as well as heading to cargurus.co.uk to find lots of great deals from top rated dealers.